So I'm gonna show you all the wet. This is a 16 bumper wagon wheel drill. We've got bumpers in a circle out here. So these would be like spokes on a wagon. If you had a wagon wheel um, <clears throat> laid on the ground and you stood in the middle, there'd be a spoke off of each one. But we're gonna have the dog standing in the middle and we're gonna work on communicating with the dog whether to look at that bumper versus that bumper or that bumper versus that bumper and all the way around. So we'll start out, we'll just pick a direction. Doesn't really matter clockwise or counterclockwise. You pick out which one. But the key here is to communicate with the dog through your leg motions and a little bit of hand motion at your side, tapping your thigh to get him to look from one to the other. That's gonna be a little a little harder as we're in the middle of it to determine which one to look at. But this is building communication with your dog at your side and getting them to understand which way or where you want them to look when you're trying to run a blind or trying to get them to remember where a bird was that they saw fall <clears throat> out of two or three. But this is where your communication starts with your dog at your side. How do you get them to look where you want them to look? Can't reach down and move their head around. We've got to get him to look in the right direction. So this is going to be the drill we're going to work on. He's done a, a four bumper. He's done an eight bumper wagon wheel. We're doing a 16 bumper wagon wheel now. And so. in the middle of the 16 bumper wagon wheel, we've got 16 white bumpers in a circle. And these all represent spokes on a wagon wheel, or some people like to think of it as uh, arms on a clock. So that would be what we'd consider nine o'clock and this one would be considered 12 o'clock, et cetera, et cetera. So the whole point of this drill is to build communication with your dog at your side and getting them to understand where you want them to look and how do you go about doing that. So the first thing we're gonna do, <clears throat> this dog is, he has learned a four bumper wagon wheel. So we started out with one at 12 o'clock and we had one at, at uh, three o'clock, one at six o'clock and one at nine o'clock. And then we built that and we added uh, four more to make it an eight bumper wagon wheel. Now we're doing a 16 bumper wagon wheel. So we've got bumpers that are really close together here in terms of where you're asking the dog to turn his head and look. So if he's got one, this one should be a little closer actually, but he's got, <clears throat> he's got three here to look at when you're trying to get him to look at that one. So his head is doing this which way do you want me to look? Where am I going? And so we've got to communicate to him and build this communication at our side. We need you to look at the one we're facing. Wherever our shoulders are lined up and our bodies lined up, we need you to go straight. Don't go this way and then turn and go that way, or don't go this way and then turn and go that way. You look at that one, lock in on it, and then we're gonna send you for it. But the way we do that is right here at the side. <clears throat> so what I've got to do with him First thing is I've got to line his spine up with where he's going. So whichever bumper I'm gonna pick out, I'm gonna have his spine lined up first and then I'm gonna line up his head and his eyes. So in order, to me, in order for me to steer this dog, I've got to be able to move him forward, backwards and pivot right and pivot left. And we're gonna use here and heel and our body language to do that. So we're gonna use here to move forward. We're gonna use heel to move back. We're also gonna use here to move pivot to the right and heel to pivot to the left. I'm gonna use my legs to help communicate that. So if I want his head to click over to the left, I'm gonna take this right leg and move it up a little bit. And, and as this dog gets polished and more proficient at this drill, there'll be a real subtle just subtleness in that leg like that. Or I might move it back. See how he's moving. Also, I can, as they get a little more polished where they're going from here to here or from here to here, we'll, we'll just tap our thigh. Now this dog is still, still learning this, so he's gonna be a lot more big in his movements with his head. So we're gonna we're gonna fine tune that over, fine tune that over time. But right now, we just want him to get his spine, his head, and his eyes lined up, which whichever whichever, whichever bumper we have picked out. So um, I always kind of step forward toward the bumper uh, uh, in the beginning just to help them understand where we're going, and then um, send them. But 
So we're gonna start out going uh, clockwise, okay? Okay, so we're gonna go clockwise now. So I'm going. I'm just gonna start to the right here. So here, here, here. I gotta be real subtle. This is a fast dog. So I've got to slow everything down for him because he's gonna, everything he does is fast. His brain's going 900 miles an hour. So I have to slow down, sit. So if he gets to moving his head around a whole lot, you'll hear me say sit, even though he's already sitting. Sit means settle down. Keep your head still. Sit. Good. So when he's when I see those ears perked up and that head settle down and he's looking, I've already kind of drawn a line in the ground from here to some point of grass in front of him right here. So I know if his head is looking at a piece of grass, I know he's looking at the right bumper. I don't have to look up at the bumper. I don't want to keep doing this the whole time. I want to be able to look down at my dog and know that that nose is pointed in the right direction. If it's pointed, let's say that piece of grass right there is the line to the bumper, then I know if his nose is going that direction, we're in good shape. But if he's over here or over here, we're not. Sit, sit, good, good, sit, good, sit, back. Good, good, here, sit, sit, sit. Drop, sit. It's kind of hard to video this and do it with one hand. Sit. I'm going to try to throw that bumper in, right back in the same spot. I want it in the middle between the, the left and the right bumper. So I'm going to try to throw it right back in that spot. Sit. And sometimes you get it right, sometimes you don't. So the, the closer it gets to one, the harder it's going to be. Now we're going to kick over to this one. So we just threw that one. It's going to make it hard because he's going, hey, you threw that. I need to go get it. And I'm going to say, no, come over to this one. Sit. No. No. Good. No. Sit. Good. No. Sit. Here. Sit. If I need to move up closer to it to get my communication for now, I will. Sit. Because I don't want him confused and making him nervous. No. So let's scoot up. Simplify it. Remember, we're teaching. Heel. Sit, here, heel, sit, good, 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 back, there. So we're just teaching this. Now we're gonna go back to the middle. We have to slow him down, he's a wild child. Sit, drop, sit, sit. I'm gonna throw, sit, I'm gonna throw that back to the middle. Try to get it best you can. Now we're gonna pick up this one right here. No. Here, sit, good, good. See those ears perked up and he's locked it, no. Sit, good, sit, back. There we go. So the hand down, all hand down means is you look, you're looking in the right direction. Sit, sit, drop. This dog's got a big motor, sit, sit. So let's try to get it in the middle. Know him off of that. We're gonna tell him no. And we're gonna move our body over to this one. No, here. Heel. Here. Sit. Good. Good. Sit. Good. No. Good. Sit. Back. Good. So that's what we're gonna do for every one of these. And I can show you a thousand times, but the concept's the same. Sit. 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 All dogs are a little different, so maybe a dog doesn't have a lot of confidence. Um, we might stay on a four bumper and an eight bumper for a while, because this is, you've got a lot of communication going on here in terms of getting your dog to look at which one. They don't look like that, you know, they look like there's a big gap there, but if you draw a line from him to that bumper and then from him to that bumper, his point of vision is, there's not a whole lot of separation when you get down to it. So. Uh, in his mind, there's a lot to lot to choose from. And what we're doing is, this is not about running and picking up a bumper. This is about, can I communicate with my dog at my side and convince him where I want him to look 
if I've got a blind way out here in this field or way over here or across the pond or wherever, can I convince him that I want him to look there across the field versus there, okay? If I can do that at my side, I've won 90% of the battle on getting that dog that blind out there. If he's convinced that that's where he's supposed to go and not there, we've got a, you know, we got a lot of it beat there and it's, it won't take but maybe one whistle or two to get there. So <clears throat> this is one of my favorite drills because it really builds teamwork and communication between you and this dog at your side and how do I get his body and his head and his eyes and his mind lined up with where he's going, where he thinks he's supposed to go. And if he thinks, uh, if he's figured out where he's supposed to go, I've won a lot of that battle. So <clears throat> do this drill, um, start out clockwise or counterclockwise. It doesn't really matter. Some people prefer one other over the other. I don't really care. But if you can't get your dog to look at the right bumper, the correct bumper, move up closer to it, simplify it. Don't get in a, a fight and be sitting here and doing all this leg movement and here, 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 heel, here, here, heel. See how crazy I can make him by all that? The whole point is to get him to settle his brain down, calm down, focus, focus on where I want you to look. And I've got to do that and be the referee of that to get him to calm down mentally and focus and look out where I want him to go. If I'm up here moving around and got too much leg movement going and I'm doing, I'll see people that are doing this with their leg, they're trying to line the dog up. It's not necessary to do that. You want to get to where you're very subtle, where you're just tapping that thigh and moving your body back. See how I can move his head? Just by shifting my feet back or moving them up. Just that much. And I want to get really subtle with it. See? Here. Here. Good. 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 Back. You see how calm I was? That gets him to settle down. If I'm up here going, here, here, heel, here, here, heel, 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 sit, here, heel. That's just gonna crank him up and make him more wound up, set than he already is. He comes out of the trailer wound up. So I've gotta have him calm so that he can mentally get through this drill. So anyway, <clears throat> it's one of my favorite drills. I love to teach it to my clients because if you can run your dog on a 16 bumper wagon wheel drill, then you can, you got the, the, uh, the basics of how to go out and run a blind with your dog at that point because you're able to communicate where to look and where to go with your dog and you're gonna get good, strong initial lines with these dogs. They're gonna start out in the right direction as opposed to them, you you trying to send them this way and in their mind, they're going this way and they start out and they go that way right off the bat. Now we're already handling. Whereas we might get a initial line of three quarters away across that pasture before they ever get offline. So it sure makes it a whole lot easier for you and the dog. Good luck.